Thank you all for being here this morning. Uh, I see some good friends like Rebecca Wiggs, who's a fellow litigator here today. Uh, I, and I, I mentioned her because, by example, she's had this same thing to happen. I'm a Methodist as well. Uh, and, and as a lawyer, uh, we do opening and closing arguments. And I work with teams of lawyers all the time. And I, they ask, well, you know, we want you to do the closing. We want you to close and closing. I said, well, look, that's only if you take two to three minutes on your opening closing. Because I don't want the jury asleep by the time I get up and talk, because I have plenty to say. So I hope you all can stay awake just for a few more minutes uh, for what I have to talk about. Uh, and let me start out by saying this. I'm the chairman of transportation. I've been the vice chairman of Medicaid. I'm very well versed on the uh, issue of, issues of Medicaid. I worked and helped engineer the Medicaid technical amendments bill the last time we had a large one. Uh, I'm very uh, well read and well uh, schooled on the issue of the health care exchange and Medicaid. And let me say this. Uh, not to disagree with any other speakers who have been here today, I think the important thing that the uh, speaker said earlier was that for every doctor you put in a county or a place, you generate $2 million of income. And that's important because in rural areas like the state of Mississippi, Medicaid expansion is a very important issue. Our, our hospital system in this state is made up mostly of rural hospitals, some of which probably should be closed. But if you don't close them, with the Medicaid mix, in, for instance, in Adams County, of 40% of, of those patients that come to our hospital, or 40% of them are Medicaid or Medicare eligible people, if there is no expansion, if there is no investment and no, no focus on what we're going to do in a state where we do eight to, eight to two match on Medicaid, $18.8 .8 billion a year in Medicaid funding, eight to two match, 100% match is a very important thing for the state of Mississippi. The other issue is that even after that 100% match, we will never fail to be an 8 to 2 or 9 to 1 state. We will never fail to be that because that's who we are. That's, we are the sickest state in the union, we're one of the poorest states in the union, and that's the only way we can survive. Now, by way of example, I'll give you another a point I want to tell you about in terms of health care. Every economy in this state where there has been a steel mill, a, 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 a automobile plant, all those communities, whether it be parts of Michigan, I, can know, I know firsthand in Pittsburgh, Mississippi, which was the steel capital of the world, that whole economy was revitalized around health care. It's an opportunity here in the state of Mississippi. We do, we do cutting edge research on, 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 on uh, heart disease, diabetes, all these particular issues. We have a brilliant opportunity here, and I hope, and I'm sure, because I work with the speaker, the speaker is a very uh, forward-thinking person. I know the governor and the lieutenant governor. I'm sure that we will not forego an opportunity to take advantage of what's out there for us. So I, I had to say that. Even though I'm chairman of transportation, I, got, I want to say something about, about education because I think it uh, ties in directly. Education, and I know this firsthand as well, in Natchez, when I was growing up, we had three major employees, John, Johns Manville, Armstrong Tire, and International Paper Company. We had top-level schools. When I was coming through school 25, 30 years ago, it was actually about 35 years ago, but I'm trying to give myself a few years. But anyway, uh, we had top level schools. And I, when I look back and, I look, and look at what that was all built around, we had good roads coming in at Natchez. We had a very vibrant rail system and a very active port system. We had infrastructure that provided jobs, provided a foundation for jobs. When those companies left, uh, uh, the, the rail stopped running. We didn't get any money for roads the jobs left, when the income of the community, when the per capita income of the community, when the level of people working in your community goes down, when a child has to come home to a parent who's unemployed, not because they're lazy, not because they're uneducated, but because there are no jobs available. When they come home to a, a parent who's unemployed, don't know how they're gonna get fed the next day, don't know if they're gonna have the right clothes to go to school, that makes a difference. People talk about putting money into education. You don't have to put money into education. Put money into the community. Put money into jobs, into economic development in your communities. Schools will grow. They will follow. You'll have a good education system. I'm telling you. I look, at, look at Clinton, as the speaker talked about. They're not a great school system just because they got a great school system. They're a great school system because they got a great economic base in that community. Natchez is on its way back. As we see jobs coming into Natchez, as we've seen the infrastructure improve around Natchez, we got uh, better, we got four lane roads coming in, north and south. Uh, we have our rail system is, is being put back down, revitalized. We've invested millions of dollars into our port system. You can see the level of interest in schools. You can see the parent involvement. You can see the attitude in children change as that changes. Now, I'm going to come back to transportation. 
I don't think you can talk about schools. I don't think you can talk about economic development. I don't think you can talk about anything that starts in this state if you're not willing, as you know, as business people, to invest in what it is you're working with. And our biggest and most important investment, our, mo our investment that has seen the, the most, the least amount of attention has been our transportation, our infrastructure system. We, as Senator Simmons said, we have a 25-year-old funding mechanism that for every two cents we, we, we gather in, in fuel tax, we spend 10 cents. You, you do 10 cents aware on highways and roads. That's how far behind we are. When we first instituted the fuel tax 25 years ago, it was 18% of the cost of, of gasoline per gallon. Now it's less than 5%. We can't sustain, we can't, not only can we not build new roads, we cannot maintain the roads that we have now. We cannot maintain the roads, we cannot protect our railroads, we cannot improve our ports. We are a river state. That one of the biggest, most uh, important part of our economic development structure has been our river and our ports. We don't have money to put into that. Our rail system is on its way back, but if we don't invest in it, it will not happen. Now, all around us, Alabama, Arkansas, Tennessee, and for that matter, Louisiana, they are all looking seriously. Arkansas has already done it. They passed a half-cent uh, sales tax that's going to put $1.3 million in their highway program, sending $680 million back to counties and cities. What do you think will happen when people start c talking about coming here, uh, bringing industry here, starting new businesses here, and they look at Arkansas, our neighboring poor state, uh, and they look at Arkansas and Mississippi, who are already planning and putting things in place, and look at Mississippi, we are waiting, looking, trying to figure out what we know we have an outdated system. We know we need to do something. We shouldn't wait until Nissan needs four lanes up around this plant, or Toyota needs a highway going to it. We cannot piecemeal projects. Because what happens is, you know what happens? You have beautiful roads around Nissan and Madison County. You have beautiful roads up in Blue Springs and those areas. But in Shark and Issaquah County, where you don't have enough money, you don't have any jobs, and kids don't know whether or not that school is going to be open the next day, you cannot afford to have pockets of areas of, 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 pla of places in the state of Mississippi where children don't have adequate schools, where, where people don't have uh, jobs that will pay them enough money to get anything done. We ought to have an infrastructure in, in place that's broad-based that takes care of everybody. Representative Snowden talked about the fact that we're 17th in the world in developed countries in terms of our educational system. I would venture to say that in all of those countries, in most of those countries that are ahead of us, what they do is they make sure no matter how poor you are, no matter where you are, where you live, you're entitled to an education that's on a level or par with anybody. Because they're smaller, probably less diverse countries, but that's something we have to look at. We do that by investing in our infrastructure, by making sure that we're on board. When somebody comes to look at the state of Mississippi, when they call Blake Wilson and say, look, we like what your state has, he ought to be able to put them on a pristine highway that takes them there. They know they can handle the loads coming in and out of there, railroads that are in place to make that happen. We want to be a part of that. Now, I'm a Methodist, I talk fast, and I'm going to finish. This is what I want to tell you. We're introducing legislation to, to reformulize how we collect tax on fuel. We want to do a new funding structure. We want you to listen to that, be on board of that. Because as much as Robert Johnson talks about that, the people who really matter are you. You need to know that it's important. You need to tell everybody out there how important it is. You're the business community. You're the community that has the, the most acute, direct benefit if we have a really, really uh, uh, great infrastructure. So I would ask, I, would, I'm, 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 I don't do it much, but I will beg for your support on this issue, and, and please, if you don't believe me, just look and talk to the people at MDOT, talk to the people around the state to talk about what we need and how quickly and how, how big an impact it can have if we make that investment. It'll impact jobs, it'll impact your communities, it'll impact your schools, it'll impact the way of life for the people of the state of Mississippi. Thank you, and God bless you. I appreciate you being here.